Now, equipment. We're going to have to spawn some things here, so let's do that. Okay. So we have attach and detach effect. We can attach grenades. We can attach chem lights. All kinds of things. Toggle flashlights is good for at night, but basically you would say enable flashlights and add gear. And as you can see, it added the gear and that flashlight would be on right now. We have toggle IR lasers and vehicle turret optics. So like in this vehicle, we can um, disable NVGs and uh, TI equipment if we want or enable it. So that's pretty cool. Fire support. Um, hmm. Where to start with fire support? As you can tell, we got all kinds of different options here, but the 105s, or I'm sorry, 155s have a small instant death radius and then a large injury radi uh, radius. So keep that in mind when using those. Uh, these are cluster rockets, which have an even bigger definite death race radius is what I'm going to call it, and then a larger injury radius. They're very loud too. And then we have mortars, which are just a general injury radius. Now, if a mortar lands on your head, it's probably going to kill you, unless you're very, very lucky. Use these sparingly. We In Rough Riders, we actually prefer that you use an artillery unit, which we will actually demonstrate right now. We're going to go to uh, NATO here, turrets, and then give me a moment to find our artillery. All right, you know what? I've been using a lot of Chidakis as part of a recent mission, or recent missions rather. So we're gonna go and just use theirs. So we're gonna set up a mortar, whoops, a mortar team. And then what we're gonna do is create a target for them to shoot at, right? So we're gonna have them shoot at this town. Target alpha. We're gonna go back to the artillery units and select artillery fire mission. You can put a map grade in or target module, in this case, target alpha. We're gonna set the spread to 162 for whatever. How many units are involved in this fire mission? What kind and how many rounds? We're gonna do three each. So we're gonna fire six rounds from these mortars. Now with the mods that the Rough Riders currently have, it will track these rounds. In vanilla armor, which in vanilla armor you wouldn't have this module anyway, but you wouldn't be able to see these rounds. So here's all of our rounds coming in. And here in a moment, they will impact. And a pretty decent spread too. You do not want to use mortars that are pinpoint on players. That's not a good experience. Now, on the topic of artillery player, players, rather, if players are in a specific area for too long, it is encouraged to get them to move in various ways, one of which is being artillery, um, especially with our current campaign. The Chidakis um, like to use artillery. So if a team's sitting there for more than, I don't know, five, ten minutes, something like that, um, we recommend using some scattered artillery to get them moving. Now, only where it makes sense. If they have, if the enemies have spotters, um, or could have spotters, that's when it would make sense. Otherwise, if they're just nowhere near enemy forces, that that's a different issue that will be dealt with separately. Now, we're gonna go to cast bomb. We're gonna actually only do the gun run, um, each or missile strike rather. Each one is pretty self-explanatory. You click it. You select the unit and. Keep in mind when you're doing a campaign in Arma through the Rough Riders, you want to select something that makes sense or as close to making sense as possible. And then you're just going to select where you want it to come in and the direction. As you can see, it's already been added to Zeus right there. And it will come in and do its missile strike. While we wait for that, flares are... Well, we'll show you what flares do. There's the missile strike, as you can see, he did not do a very good job. That's pretty common for um, AI. So, whoops. We want nighttime, not daytime. There we go. So flares, when they behave, 
should spawn in the sky like this and then slowly float to the ground. Now, in practice, this does not always work. Sometimes this module will not work at all. And then sometimes it will work perfectly like this. So keep that in mind. Interiors. So we're actually going to switch back to daytime again. Got a lot of time switching here. So for daytime, actually we'll use this. We're going to go to, uh, you can garrison building with this, as you can see. And then there you go. You have an instant garrison. Now, in this case, we're going to use interior fill on this building. And we're going to select military and edit objects. We're not going to allow damage in this case. And then as you can see, it will spawn and usually break things. That's kind of a normal behavior for this mod. But it will help you prop, prop up buildings quickly. Use this sparingly. We have a lot of uh, Zeus's that use this a little too much and can cause a lot of lag. So I'll give you an example of that. Let's just uh, increase this radius. And as you can see, we're getting a lot of props very quickly. If we open up our edit screen here, you can see our, our mouse just shrinking and shrinking. Granted, it's making all these buildings full of props, for better or for worse, but as you can tell, my FPS has dropped into, uh, well, 17 now. <laughs> and the more players you have, the harder this is going to be on them. So just, just don't do that. Now, if my game doesn't crash for me selecting all of this, I will delete these props and continue. Delete. As we wait for that to delete, oh, thank God. Yeah, so don't do that. <laughs> but it's useful for buildings that are um, important. Maybe just do it for that building. Now, add full arsenal and remove arsenal. It's pretty self-explanatory, so we're not going to stop or uh, talk about those. We're not going to talk about lambs today. Um, miscellaneous is, for example, where am I? Here we go. We can create a marker. We can double click on it and modify this and then of course delete it later which is always nice we can create or edit intel let's pick up you know that's pick upable and you know usable you can change the side of a unit with the group side now they're blue for you can heal you can create a create pop-ups and stuff we're not going to talk about those object or objectives rather we never use these i recommend avoiding these objects so we will uh spawn a car here you can attach a cute little flag if you want there you go there's a flag um you can attach other objects to other objects you can change the height of the object create ids create minefields which is actually a really good module Boom. Crazy, right? Let's do that again, but um, with random placement. Pretty cool. Quickly create minefields that way. But use sparingly, because that is a lot of props. So keep that in mind. There's all of our mines. Now, uh, you can equip with ECMs, make uh, an object or player invincible. You can toggle their simulation or visibility entirely. Um, Players, you can create a teleporter. In theory, well, not in theory, you would want to create two of these, and then they should be able to teleport between the two. Um, teleport players is where you would select groups, entire sides if you want to, and whether or not to include their vehicles. And then it teleports the player. Reinforcements. Now, this is a fun module. What we're going to do is we're going to create an LZ in this uh, soccer field here or whatever. And we're going to create an RP at the gas station. Now, I'm not going to go over all of the options here because there's a lot. But we're going to select the spawn reinforcements module, place it out in the distance, preferably away from players so they can't see it come in. 
or spawn rather. Then we're going to select the faction, in this case NATO. And then we're going to use helicopters. You can do ground reinforcements, um, but we're going to just cover helicopters in this video. We're going to select a little bird, and then we're going to select what they're dropping off. So we're going to have them do a, it doesn't make sense, but we're going to have them drop off a dive team. Then we're going to have the vehicle, or I'm sorry, the vehicle LZ be the nearest, which in this case would be LZ Alpha, but we're going to select it anyway. Vehicle behavior, we can have it stay at the LZ or drop them off and leave, which is what we're going to do. We can have uh, them pair drop, which we're not going to do, or land. Fast rope is sometimes an option as well. We're going to do a flight height of 100, unit behavior, or I'm sorry, unit RP, which would be the gas station, RP Alpha, and then unit behavior, we'll do, we'll do cautious. It will spawn in the distance and head this way. Now, while we wait for that, uh, use I would say use this sparingly. Um, it can create a lot of lag if you spawn in large forces with this, but it is good to use to simulate enemies reinforcing a position or friendlies. So, you know, keep that in mind. Now, uh, respawn, this doesn't get used very often, but you can set up loadouts, which of course is going to lag us because it's Arma. Um, and then you can create a new respawn. This is good for, uh, this is actually used in some missions of ours. Um, we'll create a temporary new respawn. Um, and then of course that will made it, be made into a permanent one once the mission's complete and the operations planning team uh, you know, uh, concludes that that's a good idea. All right, our reinforcements are finally here. <laughs> As you can see, they are landing, and the dive team is stepping off, or stepping out rather, and heading to their RP, and the chopper is leaving. Now that chopper will go back to where it came from and then despawn or delete itself entirely. Now scenario flow, you can create briefings if you like. Uh, you can end the scenario, which we n almost never use, so I recommend not using it. Uh, same goes for countdowns, respawn tickets. You can change the scenario name if you want. So Bob the Builder, if you like, and it will show up down here in the bottom right. You can change side relations, which is actually very helpful uh, for RP purposes, say if there's a prisoner exchange or something like that. And smoke shells are pretty self-explanatory. We got a bunch of various colors here. Smoke. Wow. Look at that. Pretty neat. All right. Uh, now we're going to do spawn. This is if you wanted to spawn the USS Freedom and USS Liberty. And then you would select the angle you want and you would confirm with enter. And bam, there's an aircraft carrier. What about the Liberty, huh? Same here. Boom. Look at that. Pretty neat. Now, TFAR, we're not going to mess with, but you could set up a static radio. Uh, let's do, actually, let's just show you. A little bit of lag as usual. All right. We're going to select an antenna, go back to the TFAR, select static radio, and drop it on here. It's going to ask the channel. You would set a channel, or I'm sorry, a channel. And then the frequency, you would select whether or not this is emitting a speaker of that channel. I recommend against this. Uh, same for volume, but this helps uh, increase range. So if you were standing next to this, your radio would uh, be stronger at longer distances, depending on the antenna and whatnot. So last, or not last, uh, we have training. You can use punishment on players if they're misbehaving. There's sit-ups and, uh, or whatever. There's push-ups and you get the idea. Next is Zeus. You can, uh, spawn, or you can use the arsenal. Um, there's a global hint. Get moving, boys. And it shows up in the top right. You can hide Zeus entirely if you want. Spy on people. 
You can promote to Zeus, which is used very rarely, but it is an option. We have remote control of units. So say you want to control a unit. I mean, because of course you do, right? You want to you want to control a helicopter. We're going to select this. We're going to use remote control. Now, sometimes this module is not visible and control click does the same thing. But as you can see, I am now controlling this guy. And then I could release UAV controls or hit Y again, and it would bring you out. It's going to lag as per usual. And once that's done, lagging for on, for no reason, just Arma. I hope to God Arma Force better. Um, you're back into Zeus. Uh, update editable, editable objects. So let's go to groups here and spawn some editable objects. Now this isn't going to be talked about in this tutorial. This stuff will be separate, but for the sake of showing you this module. Um, so update editable objects. This is where people need to pay a lot of attention. When using this module, please select the right options here. You have remove and add objects. If you want to hide them, you can do so. But this is an important one, very important. All curators, select no. At no point should this be yes. A lot of curators play differently, or Zeus's play differently, and we do not want to see all of your uh, props because it's going to lag us out as well. So select no at all times. You can select a radius, or you can do all objects in the mission. And then you can select what kind. So in this case, we're going to hide all except... Uh, I'm sorry. We're going to uncheck all, and we're going to um, hide... Good lord. We're going to hide static objects. Now, as you can see, it still considers some of this stuff to be units. It's it's a little finicky. So in this case, we're just going to hit hide all. So a fun fact, if you just want to hide all, you can come in, right click, editable objects, and then select a radius, and it will do it that way as well. So you don't have to go to the module every time. Same goes for removing. Now, say if I just want the vehicles, we're going to go, whoops. We're going to go add objects this time. And we're going to do vehicles and not units. So for whatever reason, Arma considers these vehicles. It is what it is, but there you go. That's how you do that. So we're going to go ahead and remove this stuff. Um, next is Zeus Lightning Bolt. This is used usually to scare players. Don't do it, but it is a tool. So there's that. So this whole video hopefully taught you guys how to use the majority of the modules. Um, and you can right-click to teleport Zeus if you didn't notice that from earlier. So hopefully this taught you all the modules. Um, in the next section, we will be covering uh, groups as well as the compositions within groups um, and markers and stuff like that. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you're new, hit that subscribe button. And I will see you in the next video.